River, where is Perpetua? She'll be here. I, I, I'm sure of it. She knows to meet us here. What if something happened? Her father... Felicity, the Lord is with her. She will be all right. of the Lord. Where is she? Where is your foolish daughter? Felix, please. She's still our little girl. She's ashamed to this family. A Christian? I forbade her. There are those in Carthage who do not worship me or the gods of Rome. These Christians are a threat, and they must be dealt with. Find every Christian man, woman, and child and bring them to me now! Arrest them! Kill them! Burn them! Send them to the arena! I want every one of them dead! And they will know that I am the god of Rome. We're here. River, girls, come in. Thank you. Please, have a seat. We are about to begin. Perpetua. My dear, come sit by me. Oh, for the beautiful baby boy. Thank you, Miss Diane. I pray that you're in good health. Perpetua, all this running and hiding is too much for me. I am an older lady, but you are still young. I pray that the Lord will give you hope words of wisdom you speak. Let us all remember the words of our Lord when he spoke to his followers. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. You are salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You have heard that it is said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. But he who endures shall be saved. Come, children of the Lord, let us thank him in prayer together. Lord, we praise you for blessing us with another opportunity to gather, encourage each other, and... Do you hear that? Get to the back of the house, quickly! You foolish woman! Felicity! Please! Stop! She's with child! <laughs> Perpetua, run! No! Felicity River! I'm not leaving you! 
By order of Emperor Caesar Severus, you are all under arrest for treason. The gathering and the worship of any other god but the emperor himself and the gods of Rome is punishable by death. Lord, please no. Please no. Enough! What is your name? Perpetua, my daughter! Father? Perpetua. Your daughter has turned against her god, the emperor, and against Rome. <gasps> no, please, sir. This is a mistake. This must be a mistake. It is these slaves of hers who deceived her into coming here! <laughs> Father, no! She's not one of them. My daughter, tell them you're not one of them. I am one of them. What? Take them away. No! She's nursing a child. Please have mercy. Please have mercy. Take the child from her. Please, not my son! The young woman Perpetua, along with four other catechumens, were placed under house arrest. Among those arrested were Perpetua's slaves, Felicity and River, Stephen, whose home church was breached, and Silas, a fellow deacon. After her arrest, 22-year-old Perpetua kept a journal, writing, While we were still under arrest, my father, out of his love for me, was trying to persuade me and shake my resolution. Father, I said, do you see this face here? Yes, I do. And I asked him, could it be called by any other name than what it is? No, it's a face. Well, so too I cannot be called by anything other than what I am, a Christian. At this, my father was so angered by the word Christian that he moved toward me as though he would pluck my eyes out. But he left at that and departed. For a few days afterward, I gave thanks to the Lord that I was separated from my father, and I was comforted by his absence. During these days, I was baptized. But a few days later, we were lodged in the prison and I was terrified. What a difficult time it was. Then our blessed deacons, who tried to take care of us, bribed Pudence, the jailkeeper, to allow us to go to a better part of the prison to refresh ourselves for a few hours. I nursed my baby who was faint from hunger. In my anxiety, I spoke to my mother. I tried to comfort my brother and I gave the child in their charge. Then my brother said to me, Dear sister, you are greatly privileged. Surely you might ask for a vision to discover whether you are to be condemned or free. Faithfully, I promised that I would, for I knew I could speak with the Lord, whose blessings I had come to experience. And so I said, I shall tell you tomorrow. Perpetua, I am waiting for you. Let's see that the dragon doesn't bite you. You shall not pass. It shall not harm me in the name of Christ Jesus. <gasps> I am glad you have come, my child. Welcome home. <gasps> Perpetua? What, what is it? You look like you've seen a ghost, yet you're glowing. Oh, Felicity! Friends, the Lord has given me a dream. What did he show you? I saw a ladder of tremendous height made of bronze, reaching all the way to the heavens. But it was so narrow that only one person could climb up at a time. To the sides of the ladder were attached all sorts of metal weapons. There were swords and spears. So that if anyone tried to climb up carelessly, he would be mangled and his flesh would be torn by the weapons. At the foot of the ladder lay a dragon of enormous size. 
and it would attack those who tried to climb up and tried to terrify them from doing so. And Sartorius, our pastor who is not arrested nor is he here in prison with us, climbed up before me. He arrived at the top and told me that he was waiting for me, and he warned me to beware of the dragon. I answered, it shall not harm me in the name of Christ Jesus. Slowly, as though he were afraid of me, the dragon stuck his head out from underneath the ladder. Using it as my first step, I leaped on his head and went up. Then I saw an immense garden, and a man sat in the shepherd's garbs. And standing around him were many thousands of people clothed in brilliant white. He raised his head, looked at me, and said, I am glad you are here, my child. He then called me over to him and gave me a mouthful of milk, and I took it with my cupped hands. And all those who stood around said, Amen. At the sound of this word I awoke, with the taste of something sweet still in my mouth. Victory is ours, my friends. But we should no longer hope for this world. We will be with the Lord very soon as martyrs. Please don't cry. I know you're afraid, but the Lord will be our strength and comfort. It's not that, River. You know the law prohibits sending a pregnant woman to the... I will be left here alone until the birth of our baby, and then sent alone to the arena with criminals and not the Lord's children. I don't think that I could bear... Oh, Felicity, my sister, do not cry. We will pray for labor to start early for you, that you will not be left alone. But four weeks earlier? Yes, nothing is impossible for God. And you shall have a healthy child, may the Lord allow. Let us sing praises to him who will work all things for our good. Hmm? Praise the good Lord for his mercy. I cannot comprehend the peace I feel. I know the Lord will look upon my need. He is so good. All the time. And all the time? He, he is, is good! good. <laughs> you Christians must be mad. You praise this God of yours who is the reason for your captivity and coming death? How is it that you are so peaceful? Oh, Pudence, if you only knew the goodness of the Lord. He would give you the strength to look death in the eye and laugh at the power it lacks. There is no fear in love, and there is no greater love than to die for your friends. That is what the Lord Jesus did for us. He died in our place and took the righteous wrath of God. And now we have the great honor of facing death on account of following Him. The honor? <laughs> well, I have the honor of worshiping my gods sit right here on my shelf. I can see them, but you pray to some god you cannot see. How could you even know he is there? I see the Lord everywhere. He is always with us, for he is within us. By his power we can endure these terrible circumstances. No one wants to face death. It is natural to desire comfort and security. But if following the Lord costs us our lives, then we are ready to give him even that. Pudence, since our first night here, I have heard you pray to your many gods every night for peace in your heart. Have you had any answer? Uh, no. The gods are silent. There has been no answer because they cannot hear you. Pudence, please hear my words. They are from my heart. I truly pray that you would open your heart to the Lord. He will answer, I promise you. He waits for us to turn to Him and allow Him into our hearts. It is even written in His word that all of heaven rejoices at the repentance of one sinner. All of heaven rejoices, can you imagine? He loves you, Pudence. He desires to make His home in your heart. He desires to save you and give you peace. Pray to Him. Let me pray with you. He will answer. 
My gods will answer me. They do listen, and they will answer. They will deliver you up to the councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. When they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak, but whatever is given you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. I will make a spectacle of these Christians. Their numbers keep growing and they have become a threat. They shall have one last chance to offer the sacrifices to the gods. If they deny this Jesus of theirs, then they will live. But if they will not deny nor offer a sacrifice to the gods, then they will die. We will not stop until every Christian man, woman, and child is sent to the lions. <laughs> Giving you all one last chance? Offer the sacrifice! No! Never! We serve the living God! I too serve the living God, and I will not sacrifice to the gods of Rome. Pastor! Who are you? I am their pastor. You are a fool! Then you will die with them! Send them away! Some days have passed, and Pudence, who oversees the prison, began to show us great honor, realizing that we possess some great power within us. And he began to allow many visitors for our mutual comfort. The day of the contest is approaching, and my father came to me overwhelmed with sorrow. I felt sorry for him. It is now two days before the games, and Felicity was distressed that her martyrdom might be postponed due to her pregnancy. But the Lord is faithful and heard the prayers we poured forth, and Felicity gave birth to a beautiful and healthy baby girl. He has allowed us to face this joyous day together, joyous because we will see the Lord tomorrow. One of the prison guards said to me, You suffer so much now. What will you do when you are tossed to the beast? Little did you think then when you refused to sacrifice. <laughs> what I am suffering now, I replied, I suffer by myself, but another will be inside me who will suffer for me, just as I shall be suffering for him. Pudence, will you continue my journal for me when we are taken? Perpetua, I... Please. Of course. Thank you. May the Lord bless you, Pudence. I pray that I will see you again in the kingdom of our God. Goodbye. Though we wait here in the darkness awaiting our fate for His sake Though the end is near We'll praise regardless 
temple of Carthage. Behold, I present to you the Christians. <laughs> On this most special of days, my birthday, I provide you with the entertainment we have all been waiting for. Release the beasts! <laughs> Stay strong, my friends! Hold fast to the Lord! The day of their victory dawned, and they marched from the prison to the amphitheater joyfully, as though they were going to heaven with calm faces, trembling, if at all, with joy rather than fear. Perpetual went along with shining countenance and calm step as the beloved of God, as a wife of Christ. These beloved martyrs joined the Lord in the land He prepared for them. They fought the good fight and have won victory in Christ. As our Lord has said in the world, you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. May we all hold fast to the faith as soldiers of the Lord, ready for every battle. love the last line of the show where Pudence, now a believer, reminds us to hold fast to the faith as soldiers of the Lord ready for every battle. We got the name The Fight for Faith from 1 Timothy 6.12, which says, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And that is our hope and desire for each one of you. Thank you so much for listening to our audio show. Be blessed. <laughs>